Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a happy Saturday morning over here from Helsinki, Finland. A very early morning indeed. Very cold once again, but you know what? Gallon of coffee on the pot, so it's almost ready to go. Anyways, as always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happies. Let's get into the live scene right over here. Bitcoin not breaking the range either way in the overnight hours, but I do want to start with the daily right now just to be demonstrative of very corrective price action. Overall, I will always want to keep the greater picture at hand, and this very orderly drop-off in volume tells me that this is corrective price action likely to lead on to a continuation of the former trend which would be down I mean the trend has not changed in the last over a year of course on the daily we have lower highs and lower lows nothing's changed there so the trend is your friend actually out of the trend as the saying goes anyways on our daily right over here we do have the 10 simple getting ever so close to that 21 exponential you've seen them snake around quite a bit and a lot of the times when you do get that first bullish cross after a very long breakout uh, it will be a fake out cross so the fact that it's kind of come back in faked it out uh, uh, two times to the upside and now coming back down that is a pretty big signal in my mind however still need to see the range break one way or the other now on the lower time frames right over here four hour dildo chart i also want to be very 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 clear about this because this, because I put a, a shit ton of weight on exponentials. In fact, that is perhaps I, I could probably say that's perhaps my favorite way to trade. Um, but overall, this this green 55 exponential, and this purple 200 exponential, we're hinting at a golden cross for the first time in a very long time. Um, a golden cross, if you're not familiar with it, is just a is a very powerful exponential move and average cross that gives you insight into what the bots and the algorithms are doing. And you can see a couple of the responses in the past. This was the last time that you had it right over here. Still in an overall even when you're getting it in an overall bear market you got a nice move all the way from about 60s uh yeah about 67 to about uh, 74 right over here i think that's about 10 percent um and then right over here the time before that uh leading into this massive move all the way from 66 to 84 so almost a two thousand dollar move over there about 29 20 25 30 percent ish move so again this cross does have some pretty heavy implications especially in cryptocurrency land and the fact that it was negated that at the last second right before it was going to be confirmed to the upside the big sellers started to come started to pile back in well that to me is a very clear and obvious signal that you know likely likely to head on lower from here now the question is do we head on lower right here right now from this exact posturing because it is a weekend and typically speaking during weekend price action not too much changes as far as like the range however you know you'll get these nasty wicks which we've certainly had plenty of i mean this wick over here this this four hour dildo right over here had a range of about 150 dollars from from uh, 35.50 to about 3700 so overall the range that i'm looking at for this weekend is this guy right over here uh let's just zoom this one out yeah okay that looks about right and then this guy right over here we'll call it yeah at around 3600 so whichever way that that the next four hour dildo breaks this formation right over here that's going to be likely your next break now of course if you want to be a little more lenient for some weekend trading because wicks are prevalent um then i'd actually extend this just a little bit and i'd say that this is your range right over here and uh, you know it's it's kind of nasty to say, but uh, in, in all honesty, you very well could scalp the uh, uh, scalp these areas right here because again, during weekend action when CMEs are closed, and uh, yes, I understand that, that it is a world market, it's twenty four seven. But when you have professional exchanges with the professional traders, you know, trading this on a, on professional exchange schedules. Um, like like CME and SIBO, where which is where I used to actually used to trade. Well, it's it's not you know you, that's gonna hold some weight at, at least at least it has been for the last year ever since they've uh, ever since they've opened or over year I should say. Anyways, um this 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 would be the more scalp range I suppose you could say. Uh, very rarely do you see a break of the range over the weekend. In fact, it is very important to also denote that CMEs did close at thirty six twenty five. The last kind of tick on this was a major rejection actually. Um, um, I believe they closed at uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time yesterday night, Friday. Uh, so again, you know, looking at this guy right over here, Bitcoin likely to, you know, the the next big trade is likely to be on Sunday, whenever Bitcoin when Bitcoin opens, and we're gonna and we're gonna see are the spot exchanges above or below the actual open of where CME is closed. If they're below, then the gap fill is probably gonna be a sell, probably gonna be a nice a nice trade off that could be with the overall trend. If it's above probably gonna be a buy for a bounce but it's very difficult to play those sorts of things because you're going against the overall trend and i do believe that there's a lot more things pointing downwards and upwards right now 
speaking of that, let's go over here to um, to our GDAX chart, fresh chart, and just take off everything and look at our higher level uh, oscillators. We got the daily over here. Daily Stokes having a fresh cross down a couple uh, about what was this two days ago? Yeah, two days ago on the tenth. So uh, just a day and a half, pretty much into it. Um, overall, we do have DMX not telling, or sorry, DMX the DMI and ADX not telling us shit right here. But it, but the DMI minus is getting pretty damn close. More importantly, though, the RSI is getting back into the bearish control zone, trending well below that exponential over there as well. So again, you know, looking putting these sorts of things together, it's telling you, it's telling you exactly what the charts are telling you, right? It's telling you that bears in control. Now, if we go over here to the 12 hour and look at my favorite indicator, the jewel, that one actually gave you a beautiful sell signal um, a few ticks ago, right over here. And that's, are we likely to, are we likely to carry this guy further down? Um, typically you do come into some support right around here. So it would not, it, it would certainly not phase me if we went sideways here for a little bit of time. Um, however, however, looking at the RSI, you know, same sort of thing as a daily. What about the, what about the 10 hour right over here? Yeah. 10 hour is giving you a clear sell signal on the DMI. Uh, in ADX right over here, actually creating a relatively uh, one of the stronger trends of the last uh, couple of weeks, actually going all the way back over here to middle of December. We haven't really got the ADX that high. So again, could a big move be incoming? Could we be get could uh, could we be uh, headed further downwards? Well, overall, that is the pattern, right? You know, Bitcoin did break this symmetrical triangle that we'd been looking at for about what was it about two and a half weeks going all the way over here. This does have a mesh move pointing us quite further down, quite further down. Good English crown, great English. <laughs> fucking moron um but uh but down around here at around 3250 ish area so that would actually make a lot of sense with bitcoin essentially overall playing into the uh, potentially a next uh, another descending triangle um now i think that this is a little bit easier to see if i put it on a four hour perhaps but basically if we scroll this guy onwards and outwards bitcoin just putting in lower highs i mean again the the rejection of 4100 uh, a lot of people got this on stream i was not I, I was trading my main account during this time but a lot of people got this on stream and uh and shorted this 40 50 40, area right over here fucking be beautifully phenomenally played shorting the top of a resistance and then it actually broke out to the downside. So it's like a double whammy. You get to, you know, you, you, you get, you get everything. Um, but overall, you know, this, this declining trend line right over here, well, that's just governing our lower highs. So you have to be looking at this and as really, I mean, it's just more of the same is, is what we're looking at. We've seen that Bitcoin loves descending triangles before. In fact, I love descending triangles as well because they seem to play out pretty damn, pretty damn, um, you know, pr uh, pretty damn accurately. And Bitcoin put in a nice descending triangle over here for, you know, over the course of about a year. I'm not drawing this perfectly, by the way, but, you know, so something like this. Um, so it does have a history of playing these out, you know, descending triangles, descending triangles and symmetrical triangles, uh, pretty damn good with it. So could we be in the midst of creating another another massive descending triangle, which would have an apex somewhere over here in, where would this be? Th this would technically be uh, eight, like uh, April, May, like June, per perhaps right over here. Uh, Going to be quite some time, but you know, as as you can see, descending triangles do typically break before the actual apex of it. Once they get about this full, actually, they uh, they do break. Um, so it could be it could be a lot of time really spent in this area. I do like how there is a measure move pointing all the way down around here, which is essentially the lower end of your um, uh, of your range support. You know, your big support. Not only that, but it's also this 5200 number. It, or sorry, 250 or 3250-ish area number is also our 200 simple moving average on the weekly chart. If I can bring it up, that'd be much better. There we go. Okay, and boom, there you are. Yeah, so so 200 simple coming in right around here, right around that beautiful 3250-ish area. So I really do like that for good confluence, and it makes me want to be very um, hesitant in looking for the big downwards trade. Because until that area is actually broken, seeing that it lines up with these with with one a major a major uh, moving average, and then also two our, our our biggest support right now as well that we're currently resting on, or you know as as far as like overall market structure goes, um, don't really want to be overall directional short until that until that area breaks. Now I am still short from last night, or, or sorry, I did close most of my short last night um, from 36, uh, 36, 46 that I showed on stream um, and on that last kind of down. To a little bit below 3600 and I'm still holding my 6300 short right over here so that I'll just be kind of um 
I would just be kind of holding those until until essentially told otherwise. So again, it's it, it's one of those things. I'm looking for three different things to get me out of bear market mode. I'm looking for a higher high on the daily. That'd be a good start because well, you know, you haven't done that in over a year. So good start, but not going to get you finished. In fact, the least important of the, of the three things that I'm looking for. The second thing is what is kind of alluding to what we were just looking at right over here. If Bitcoin could both open and close a weekly dildo above that purple 200 exponential, then yes, I do believe that it's, you know, it's it's likely to have some carry on. Um, and, uh, and, and I'll probably actually look for some longs at that point in time. But again, needs to both open and close above that area, which as you can see, that is exactly where it's been stifled and shoved back down, shoving those red dildos back down Darth Maul style right over here for the last I mean really couple months ever since uh, uh, end of November so looking at that and putting those those two things together that would you know if those two things were put in again I want to say that I would start to probably look for some longs like at least a starter position and then the third and final and most important but you're probably gonna know beforehand is if Bitcoin can get back above 6,000 right over here the breakdown point just your more traditional type thing if Bitcoin you know if, if any asset spends a year consolidating at a, at a certain level and then when it breaks down that leads into a full-on you know, it, it leads into a full on new phase of the market cycle. Well, if you can get back above that area, that from a technical analysis perspective would suggest that that is, you know, it's no longer, it's no longer bear, bear market mode time anymore. So, so keeping that in mind, um, with, with all that in mind, yes, I am still looking for shorts. I am still playing this to the downside, going back on over here to GDAX. I do want to also talk about the two day dildo chart. This is quite important as well because uh, two day dildo chart, not only a rejection of the 21 expansion moving average right over here, which does tell me that the, that the, that the two day death cross is still being played out. Um, so that means that all. All, I believe all time frames are actually death cross right now. We can actually go through it in a second, but uh, but overall, you know, as long as Bitcoin is below the 21 exponential moving average, this yellow line, and that is death crossed over there, which is not changing around anytime soon. Um, I, I I would be very I'd, I'd be looking for shorts and, and very bearish. This was one of the impetuses also for taking that short around the 4,000-ish area. While everyone was looking at this as an inverted head and shoulders, and it's time to get long, baby, because Quasi Quasimodo is going to carry you on his back all the way to 5,000. No, 6,000. No, 20,000. End of day, bitch. So again, you know, this, this this sort of thing is what I put a lot more weight on, and that's going to save you from being caught up in the moon boy prayers, the moon boy myths, we'll call it, with the moon boy myths. Not only that, but uh, you can also see very easily over here that uh, two day stokes over here cross down gaining momentum down and after a couple snakes um, to the upside this typically is the good signal I, I would say but again it is a two day right so two days going to take at least well <laughs> well we actually we do close one later tonight at 7 p.m eastern of time but i'd imagine that if you are going to get the move it's probably going to be you know it's it's going to be likely sometime next week i again i don't think that there's going to be a big momentous move during the weekend but overall uh you actually are funnily enough there was no signal on a daily uh, DMI, but there is a sig there is a sell signal on the two day DMI, which is very strange to me. It's very so you'd think you'd think that that the daily would have to go first before the two day, but no, you're actually getting a signal on the two day uh, for a sell, and, and almost and this is actually almost a very perfect signal. If we if I could get one more tick up on the ADX over here, I would consider that a full on signal, and I would. I would take that. Um, again, this is not financial advice, but not a financial advisor. Blah, 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 blah. Go fuck yourself, SEC. But <laughs> again, just sharing what I'd be thinking over here. Uh, this, and again, we will be getting a new close on this uh, later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So looking at this guy right over here, if you see that ADX get anywhere near this dotted trend line right over here, uh, that's that's good enough for me. That is good enough for me. Anyways, you can also see, and, and also the two-day chart is just revealing all. The emperor has no clothes right now. And the two-day chart is giving you hidden bearish divergence. You are in the overall context of a downtrend. You are making lower highs on price action and higher highs on your oscillator. So what is that telling you? It's telling you that the bulls are basically using up more energy to get lower in this downtrend. So, you know, again, trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And that's that's essentially what, what, what hidden divergence of any sort means. I typically don't like to point it out too much because because it's not like, I, I feel like it's one of those things that people on crypto Twitter use to like sound cool. It's like, ooh, we got some hidden bullish divergence over here, you know, and this this one I only found and no one else found, it's secret. No, it's not at all. It's it's basically just continuation is what it's telling you. It's, it's continuation of the overall trend, um, which which is is important over here. When you have, when you have it, aligning with the overall greater trend not just not 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 just down around here but the overall greater trend for the last year over a year um then that's that's worth a lot and again i can't stress enough that in i will i'm always happy to take trades on the overall side of the market cycle so 
if I'm, um, if I'm, uh, you know, if, if the overall trend is bearish, I'm happy to look, for, I'm happy to take any sort of bearish indication. Uh, if the overall trend is bullish, I'm happy to take any sort of bullish indication. That's where they shine. If you trade bullish things in bearish markets, good fucking luck. If you trade bearish things in bullish markets, good fucking luck as well. You know, that's why perma bulls and perma bulls, per, perma bears get wrecked. Sorry, perma bulls and perma bulls. Yes, that's exactly right. Because perma bulls have been getting, getting absolutely sloshed either which way. And again, you know, not a fucking inverted head and shoulders, motherfucker. Jesus. Christ. As you can see, I obviously have a bone to pick with this. Um, anyways, uh, <laughs> I'm, even, I'm just having an argument with myself. It's so disgusting. Anyways, um, let's go check out GBDC. GBDC closing the day unched, and uh, I think it, I think GBDC is actually actually on the two day pretty easy to read as well. Again, a rejection of the 21 exponential moving average right over here. Uh, two day dolo death cross right over here. So you could even say the same things as as uh, as spot markets. And you also have. Uh, you all, you also have the same signal on your on your ADX DMI. Interestingly enough, but no, the the ADX is nowhere near telling you that this is uh, ready to roll. Um, but hey, remember this you know trades on normal market hours, so it won't open up until Monday, which also kind of makes me think that it's probably gonna, you know it's going to be a while. It's it's going to be at least until the tr the actual trading week starts, when uh, when it's likely to you know if, if things are going to tick down, it's it's likely to be then. Again, overall uh, uh, volume characteristics of this very corrective. Uh, going into the lower time frames, we can see that we're actually just operating in a bear flag right now as well. Um, bear flag right over here. And this, you know, again, people really got faked out by this breakout right over here. This is why you have to understand volume in relation to the actual pattern. When you don't get that massive volume splurt, uh, splurt, splurt, swish, swish, um, right above this area uh, on, on a potential breakout, that should be immediately a major red flag just shining in your eyes and saying, hey, uh, you might want to reconsider this because not only that, but you even got a full signal right here with the rejection, this nice shooting star dildo, and then a couple more tests and then boom, down. Um, so to me, this is a pretty damn clear signal as well. Breaking all the way down below $4.42 and using that as resistance, it looks like opening the day up and testing it and then rejecting off of it. Um, does this flag break? like <laughs> next week when it uh when it when it opens once again i mean it it does look pretty damn weak let's see what our oscillators say yeah four four hour stokes uh still headed down so they still got some momentum eight hour fresh cross down as well so that's that's gonna have some carry through and then pretty much every time from on the adx dmi is flashing um right now flashing some sell signals uh eight hour rsi getting back into the uh getting back into the bearish control zone getting back below the uh black back below the exponential and overall this is telling you you basically have a rising channel on your rsi which yes you can definitely do charting formations on the rsi in fact i'd, I'd even be a little bit more um i'd, I'd, I'd be more inclined to actually do it there because it's going to lie to you less than actual price action Pr playing patterns in cryptocurrency is I, I think not that not that viable except for except for triangles triangles seem to work pretty damn well but you know head and shoulders cup and handles all the animal patterns like insert fucking elf foot pattern fucking scallop whatever the fuck pattern here those are great for retailers because it's easy for them to see so they call it on a crypto twitter and then everyone gets it really really excited so they all get you know guys and cash has the bullish cup and handle elf foot fuck <laughs> it makes no sense <laughs> and fruit flies are in there as well <laughs> so <laughs> so you know what that means it ain't going fucking lower bro bro we got bro we got that we got that inverted firefly this thing's going to the moon no problem i'm all in hashtag hodl hashtag never sell Hashtag never sell at a loss. Hashtag perseverance. Hashtag dedication. Hashtag hard work. Hashtag beast mode. <laughs> Hashtag wrecked, motherfucker. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hashtag regular person mode as well. Because there's... <laughs> you don't get any bonus brownie points for uh, for holding um, depreciating assets. Um, unfortunately there's, there, there's some like really weird sort of mentality that people think like they deserve something if they hold it for a long time. Like I've, I've heard people say, I deserve a bull market because I've held through, through 20,000 down to 3000. Like what? No, <laughs> you're, 
you're just <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with those you don't get gifted anything in this world you're not owed anything in this world in, in case you didn't know um in fact <laughs> because because of your inability to take responsibility you're actually more likely to uh to just get more wrecked over time because you <laughs> you don't have the fucking acumen to understand uh market cycles and that things you know what goes up must come down um, in a more traditional sense. And in fact, speaking of that, let's get over to it right over here. So uh, Bitcoin, I don't want to go through the full thing on this. If you want my full explanation of, uh, of of basically where we're at and what we're doing from a higher time frame perspective over the long term, like long term analysis, go check out the playlist titled Long Term Analysis. I won't go into in the full deep dive here because it's, it's going to be like another fucking hour. I'll do actually a new one tomorrow. I do one every Sunday just uh, just for for reference. But but what's relevant right now is that taking everything off and just looking at this, you can see that Bitcoin is doing something very similar over here to what you're doing to what you did right over here in the 2014 2015 market cycle now the reason why this is even relevant why i'm going to talk about it is because market cycles are very very similar across all different assets because we're dealing with humans boy boy uh we're dealing with humans we're dealing with human irrationality we're dealing with human psychology which has been essentially unchanged ever since we became anatomically modern homo sapiens so why is that relevant? Well, that's why you see the same sort of patterns over, you know, o over time. Not exactly the same, not identical brothers, not identical twins, but like similar brothers, right? Like they're just born a couple years apart, which they quite literally are. They're born like literally four years apart. Um, so it evolves over time. And this is also why they're similar in nature over different, you know, assets. So whether it's magic net money, whether it's Forex, whether it's commodities, or whether it's, you know, equities, which is where I come from as a market maker and equity options. Um, market cycles are relatively similar you can you there there are uh, there are very specific parts that give you insight into what's going on and right here you can uh, i see a lot of things uh, rhyming with this area right over here look at the volume characteristics of this area in relation to your parabolic trend right over here now just for reference when i when we actually do see capitulation if we see capitulation in a more violent way which can come different ways which maybe i'll talk about tomorrow but i want to see volume similar to what you did over here as over here which is exactly what you got in 2014 beautiful but as you can see over here this volume while it does look pretty impressive and you have probably and you have all the moon boys on on reddit and crypto twitter saying oh my god high volume red dildo it's moon time it's guys i've read the wall street mark cycle cheat sheet and you know what you know what that means you know what that means it ain't going lower, bro. So get, get your fucking lungs in. No. Uh, this in relation to this is very similar of this in relation to this. And you also have to keep in, in, in mind that this is measured. These volume characters are measured in coins traded, not dollars traded. If we look at it in dollars traded, what we what we did over there is nothing to begin with. I mean, it's it's I mean, you tell. Well, you tell me again. Remember, do, this is this is dollars. Tra sorry, this is coins traded. This is dollars traded over here. Now, look at that, baby. Look at that. Is that anywhere near, you know, what you did over here in your, in your parabolic cycle? No, it doesn't need to be exactly there. Like if it got to if, if it even got to this area right over here, I'd be like, all right, looks good. That looks good enough. That looks good enough for me. Um, but uh, but even but even more importantly, everyone gets everyone was excited about this red deal over here. When you actually have capitulation, you don't go lower. That's the whole thing about it is that you know, uh, what, what essentially happens during capitulation? Well, uh, someone with extremely deep pockets, whether it be a financial institution or, or you know, I don't know, Jeff Bezos or, or whoever the fuck or reptilian overlords. Well, they come in with their deep pockets and they say, OK, this is where I want to buy. And typically it comes at a time where very few people are, are even aware. So the fact that everyone's looking at 1100 to 1300 makes me very skeptical. I think that is probably gonna be a little bit higher. Um, but uh, but but my point is that they'll buy up so much at the actual bottom because they need to get everything that they can at those prices because they don't they don't they don't ever intend on them going back there because they are going to protect it. You know, someone with that sort of deep amount of pockets, they you know, they will run up the market and then that's going to cause other people to jump on in. And so you get something very similar to what to like this, where, you know, you get that initial wick up, right? You, you get this initial wick right over here, which is literally a 40% move in, in just a wick. And remember, you know, from, 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 from open to close in like the next week, it was up 69%. And in, in three weeks, it was up a hundred percent. I mean, so that's essentially what you're looking for right over there. Again, it doesn't need to be exact, but to put that into, into context over here, our current bounce has been about a little over 20 percent so and that's in four weeks by the way sorry uh one two three yeah four weeks a little uh almost four weeks exactly so this was done in one week 69 percent one week for uh 20 percent four weeks and struggling you know again so is you know 
this to me, uh, not capitulation, but very similar to what you did right over here. Look at all the time spent in this area. And even this is, this is quite devious indeed, because you actually do make a slightly higher high right over here on this second drive after the first initial drive. Um, so that is something to watch out for. So even if Bitcoin were to make like a higher high over here, like maybe even put in a high at 4,500, I'd still be very skeptical. Again, I need to see a weekly deal of both open and close above this 200 exponential. As you can see right now, it's still providing some, some nice resistance. Um, anyways, uh, uh, what, what else can we look at that? Well, we can go look at the MVT signal really, really quick. Um, let's see. Uh, do we want the MV? Yeah, the MVT signal. There we go. Um, and you can actually see see a very signature, uh, very similar signature in the MVT signal. And the reason why I like this is because the MVT signal is completely divorced from anything else that we look at in the price volume, in like the indicators, like price volume and time, right? And this is essentially, I mean, again, this is the network value divided by the daily transaction value, and then interpolated using forward, back moving average, blah 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 blah. But basically, this thing calls tops and calls bottoms every single time in Bitcoin's market cycle history perfectly. So, as you can see over here in 2014, you know, you put in your top above this area, you know, where my curse currently is around, which would be around 150 ish area. It puts in the top, comes down. This is, you know, this is not your bottom over here. comes back up again. And then that's your bull trap right over there comes down and then, and then kind of straddles this 100 area and then comes down for the full bottom right over here, uh, where my curse currently is now. Now, if you do the same thing in 20, um, in, in 2018, we basically, we basically did do the same thing where, you know, pops all the way up, comes, comes down to this 0.5 level, uh, actually on that first drive down to 6,000 in February. So that, that, and that actually is an example of what capitulation can look like. It, it really is. It really is. But things pop back up, put in a bull trap over here, very similar to the bull trap over here. In fact, getting around the exact same uh, level on the oscillator and then coming down exactly to where we are right now. Look, it's, it's, all, it's right around this dotted trend line on the 100. And again, remember, this is divorced from, it, from really anything else that we look at. So to have the same sort of signature here is very, very conspicuous. And the way that I look at it is, uh, you know, as long as we're right here, understand that this thing, you know, has plenty of juice to go for the, to go lower every each and every time Bitcoin, you know, puts in a, a parabolic top, it comes down to at least where my curse currently is now. So it's it's quite literally right smack dab in the middle. Um, anyways, uh, if Bitcoin were to break lower again, I don't believe it's right. It's appropriate to to talk about how to well, I, I can talk about how I'll trade it. Um, I'll trade it the same way as 6000. So remember, you know, uh, above 6000, looking at that for a long time, right? It's it looked bearish, you know, you have a bearish formation, it, it, everything was kind of pointing down, you had lower highs. And I mean, it's, it, I, I think, I think people who are tuning in this content can uh, knew that, you know, f we were talking about that for about eight months prior to the actual break. But to actually take the trade, we didn't take the trade, or at least I didn't take the trade until 6,300 right over here on this last drive, on that last on, on that last kind of uh, rejection of the two-day 21 exponential moving average after the um, after after this uh, death cross right over here, two-day little chart. Hey, what's up, uh, B B Con uh, Connolly? Good to meet you, man. Good to have you in here. Um, but overall, you know, keep that in mind because it's the same, it's the same sort of mentality right over here. I want to see that 200 simple break first and foremost, basically your prior low right around this 3250 ish area. So weekly 200 simple and also some good historical, uh, horizontal trend lines. I think this was one of the times that China banned Bitcoin. So it does have some, some relevancy to it. And then if that happens and yes, then we can talk about lower targets. My next big lower target is right here around 2300 to 2600. That's also the 886 Fibonacci tracement, which is actually where you did bottom out in 2014 just right over here just saying um and also if we put on uh, if we if we go over here to the monthly dildo chart and we put on the weekly uh the weekly nope sorry the weekly not monthly uh the the weekly on blx index is what i meant to say jesus christ man i can't get my words out right uh, but you can see that the the 377 uh exponential moving average is coming in right around to uh 2600 which is a which is a very 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 important Exp uh, sorry, Fibonacci um, exponential moving average number. So again, uh, more relevant in traditional markets. I used to use that a lot, but I to see it to see it kind of pop up and agree with some other things that I'm looking at in uh, in Bitcoin land. I think that it, I think it's definitely on my radar. Uh, not only that, but 
uh, in this area, we also have some nice historical uh, horizontal trend lines. And if we put on the volume profile, we have a nice thick AF node coming down around here. Now, of course, you'll notice that there's massive nodes below that or around the low 1000s area. Of course, you know, that is potential, but I take things one thing at a time. I, I just don't see how you can say as an analyst that things are definitely going down here or even lower than that uh, when there's potential areas beforehand. I mean, that's that. I mean, I guess that is something an analyst would say, but as a trader, you can't trade like that because this there, there's variability in the market. And again, when I explained how market bottoms really get put in during capitulation, understand that that is kind of the priority of, of the person doing it is to kind of do it where people are least expecting it so that they can get the most that so that they can literally get the most at the lowest price. Um, that's why when, whenever people ask me like, what are you going to do during capitulation? I say nothing there. You're not going to be able to do anything. You, like someone's just going to hit the fucking buy button. It's going to price is going to run up like 500 to $1,000 in the span of 10 seconds. Um, something like that. Uh, may, maybe not that, ex maybe not that exact, but you know, some, some like that. Uh, anyways, um, this area uh, over here, my next big area uh, of interest, if that area does fail, which, you know, it's certainly a possibility. Then the next area to look towards is 1850, which I actually feel has a pre it, it, like no one's talking about it. And, and when everyone's looking a little bit low over here, well, things usually do one of two routes. They either get front run, which would kind of line up with that, or they, or they drop further, which could be very, very nasty. Um, but overall, you know, this, this, this could be interesting. You also have the 377 on Bitstamp coming in around here, but that's, it's just cause it's not mature enough really is the reason why. Uh, and then yeah, if that, that area does fail, then, then yes, then we could talk about 1100, 1300, which is your 942 Fibonacci retracement down around there. And yeah, again, um, could make a little bit of an extrapolation with the uh, uh, with these trend lines right over here and make a relation as well. Again, this is a little bit less. Th this is a little bit less technical analysis or a little bit a less trading analysis that I would even go off of, but more of like you know woo woo type bullshit, which. It's fun to do mental masturbation. I love mental ma mentally masturbation. You should do it once a day, says a doctor. But <laughs> I just want to say that, hey, am I putting all my eggs in this basket? Absolutely not. But hey, looking at this uh, descending trend line right over here and relating it to this, there's a reason why they're both in there. They both hold in the consolidation before the bull trap area of, of that market cycle. So you have this one over here, and then you have this one over here. Now, you'll notice that once it actually breaks out of this area and puts in that bull trap, it comes back down and bases on it once, bases on it twice, and puts in your ultimate low right around here around the 886 if we did the same thing over here in 2017 2018 march cycle well we broke well you know you consolidate over here you break out of it over here and we've actually based on it once already uh if it based on it over here well we can actually come in come in with a time frame now at the uh really the 886 which would be like mid to late february which could make sense um that would be a little bit sooner than i think i uh, that uh, that uh, that um, it, it would just be a little bit sooner than I think you know I would think, uh, but hey, opinion not needed. I don't trade my opinion. It's it, it's it's not necessary. If if Bitcoin were to come down to this eighteen fifty area, it would suggest you know middle of April. And if it were to come all the way down to uh, to 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 eleven hundred thirteen hundred, then that would suggest like early July, um, early to middle of July. So yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, but we'll get back on to the lower time frames uh, and talk about more relevant ideas. Um, on this guy. So as, as you can see on our BitMexican chart over here, the two, the, the 21 exponential on the, uh, on the two hour dildo chart is now governing price. By the way, we have a fresh, uh, we have a fresh death cross right over here, the green 55 to the down. So the purple 200, and now all time frames are death cross, at least all time frames hourly and above, you know, the, the, like, like a five minute can, can switch around pretty rapidly. Uh, so it doesn't really matter too much, but the fact that we are respecting the 21 exponential as this is death cross does tell me it's it, it's likely to play out it's just you know during weekend bullshit it, you typically don't get like uh like a uh a, a market shifting move but hey you know that has been negated in the past there certainly have been major moves that do break the range over a weekend period before it's just it's less likely is my point um but my but uh, but my next point is that hey i'd be happy to take any trades off the 21 exponential on this uh on this two hour dildo chart right over here. So, I mean, it's pretty much lining up with this, with this resistance trend line right here at around 36, uh, 78. 
But overall, you know, if this does break, yeah, it is a bear flag. You technically can make a measure move on a bear flag. Uh, and this would, you know, this would obviously be hit before before the measure move of the symmetrical triangle. But this would be pointing us down, hey, all the way over here to 34.50 a sherry. So I do like that, that it lines up with this next kind of horizontal right over here. In fact, we could even just scoot this in just a little bit. But yeah, a nice little range over here. Um, and these are typically things how play out, uh, how, how things play out, you know, you, how, how things play out in a bear market. You know, you walk it down, bear flag flag, walk it down, bear flag, you know, that, uh, that, uh, that kind of nice, uh, lovingly flow of price action. So I'd be looking at that area right over there. And, uh, if this does get broken, which technically the flag does have a breakdown point at 3615. So if it can close a two hour dildo below there, that would, you know, be considered broken. Although I, I'd really, I'd really, I'd really exercise caution. I'd, I'd want to see this 35, uh, 69 support broken fully. But then again, you know, it's, it wouldn't be too much edge to this area down around here. But, you know, fair enough. Uh, there are a few things to be aware of this area, though, because this area has been quite staunch around 3,600. The reason why, or, or at least the reason why I believe, is because not only would it be your potential uh, right-hand shoulder, if you're looking at this as the inverted Quasimodo, but it would also be the 618 Fibonacci retracement, as you can see right over here, right around 35. Uh, 30, uh, sorry, 35, uh, 60-ish area. So a lot of the bots and algorithms are going to be buying that just by the nature of their program. So, so if Bitcoin did bounce here, if Bitcoin did bounce back up and take out this this resistance trend line around 36, uh, 69, 3680, whatever it is, um, then I'd imagine that there's really not too much stopping it from the th from from the 3800 level right over here. So it is worth it is it is worth talking about that because. You know, if, if the bot is gonna, if, if the algo is gonna be buying six one eight, then typically speaking, they're gonna be selling this the three eight two. But I would imagine that if this move really is gonna play out, it probably doesn't retrace back there. In fact, I'd say if Bitcoin gets back above thirty seven fifty, might want to reconsider a few things. Um, basically, this this horizontal right here, although less important, but thirty seven fifty right over here. If if things did play up, I would really want to and and. You know, we're still going to maintain that bearish posture, and you really want to see this area be sold into. Um, but hey, you know, just saying, saying what, <laughs> saying what that actually does imply. So fair enough. Anyways, let's get on over here to uh, to Mr. Buterol. Let's see how he's doing. He's been the canary in the coal mine. He's the one who told us that the top was in at four thousand. A much clear and obvious tra um, uh, chart to read. Uh, nice Wyckoff distribution top. Again, you had that very beautiful fall off in volume right over here. And that led into your actual break of this formation. Major volume being pumped right in on these red dildos. Darth Maul shows his face once again. Smacks Obi Wan in the uh, Obi Wan in the stomach. I don't know what does he do. No, he killed Qui Gon. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I don't even know my Star Wars. But hey, uh, same sort of thing over here. You get your first markdown, and it looks to me like this is redistribution. And uh, hey, good to meet you, uh, Yara, Yara, Jara, uh, Jora. <laughs> Robertson, good to meet you, ma'am. Hope I'm getting your name right. Uh, but yeah, looking like it's morphing into to, to redistribution to me. But again, it can take some time in, in filling out this area. You have the 200 simple on the four hour dildo chart starting to slowly creep up to price action at this 127 support. If this area does break, then the next big support I look I, I really look forward is technically here at around 118 and a half, but, but really more realistically is, is gonna be 108. Uh, I don't think that you're just gonna break this area to come back down here. Uh, I think you're gonna come back all the way around here. Again, this is a beautiful Wyckoff top, so I'd, I'd be, I'd be hard pressed to think that that just stops right there. Um, doesn't mean it can't, you know, I guess, I guess to offer up the other perspective on this is that as long, you know, as long as you're above one, uh, sorry, as long as you're below 130, uh, 135 and 69 cents, I would be very bearish, um, and looking to be a seller. Uh, do we have any sort of indication on this guy? Maybe the lower time frames are showing something. Um, yeah, lower time frames do look like they want to sell. Uh, do we have hidden bearish divergence? We do. Uh, lower lower highs on price action, higher highs on oscillator. Um, ADX DMI not telling you. Sh well, actually, could be could be giving you a signal pretty damn soon. It is starting to spruce back up. Uh, so let's let's maybe go to like a four hour. What does a four hour say? Yeah, four uh, four hours giving you some hidden bearish divergence as well between this point and this point. Um, not super strong, but it is worth mentioning. Jewel is saying is saying hold up though um so yeah 
Again, it's same thing as Bitcoin. I want to see this area broken first, 126 and 80 cents. If that area gets broken, then yes, te uh, technically speaking, this is your next area of support, 118 and a half. And then if that area breaks, then, then 108 uh, right around here. And then, you know, if Bitcoin's going to go back down and fulfill the measure, the, the full measured move of that symmetrical triangle down at 3250, this very, very likely, you know, returns to the same, you know, sub 100 area as, as well. Um, but again, these are, these things are going to take time. A lot of the, the, a lot of the, a, a lot of these things that I'm talking about are like Likely to take a long time so you know i mean not not even just saying like this like this weekend but like you know maybe even like a couple weeks three weeks four weeks I, again time analysis is not something that i think could be done but it's it's good it's good to assume that you don't know the timing of them and that you can just go off a of price action because that is well that's really all you can trade you can't trade time i mean try t time is like the one thing that you can't literally like buy it's 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 like the best thing people don't even understand this man it's like why why would you ever <laughs> I, I have this friend who like always goes to like, uh, you know, these, the, these like discounted things like super far away because it's like, oh, dude, they got like 10% off. It's like, what? You just wasted so much time that you can never get back. You can get money back. Money is abundant. Time is not. Time is literally limited. It's the only limited thing. It's the only limited thing. Anyways, way off, way off kilter there. Uh, spies over here. Again, still grinding the top area, but I do believe that it's putting a local top. Again, I wouldn't be, it's not appropriate to be, it's the same thing as Bitcoin. And I hope, I, I really hope that I've been clear on this. I feel like I've been misheard a lot, but um, but uh, as long as you're above 238 and a half over here, don't be bearish. Or at least I would not be bearish. Again, this is not fun advice. But popping back around here, I'd really, you know, and, and I hope I've been clear about this as well. If I'm looking for, if I'm looking for my more traditional sell uh, sell area, it'd be right around 260ish area, 260ish area. This thing is just it is grinding up and being relentless to all of the over aggressive shorts, thinking that they're geniuses shorting, you know, right here when really the bull trap over here was the place to be doing it. Then you got the then you then you got then they even gave you a second massive signal right over here, which we talked about on stream. Uh, in essentially doing the death cross on the daily dollar time frame, then re then get re getting rejected by the uh, by the twenty one. I mean, it's that was very generous of of you, Mr. Spy. And uh, now people are just trying to short it right over here. So fair enough. Uh, also fulfilled the measure move of your head and shoulders reversal pattern coming all the way down or around here. And yes, same thing as Bitcoin. I am bearish on this, looking for lower lows over time, but over fucking time. Oh my God, uh, I would not want to be short until you actually put in, in, in until you actually put in that top. I think what's likely, what's probably likely to happen is that you probably do put in a little bit of a uh, little bit of a local top here, pop back down, re uh, reaccumulate, and then put in put uh, put in that like 260, 261 ish area, and that's gonna likely be the sell. I mean, it's gonna be brutal. Like people have to understand, like this. If you are if you are not emotionally mature, you will get fucking chewed up and spit out by spy, and it will fucking laugh in your face. So fair enough. You are also kind of in. I mean, you also have this very orderly drop off in volume right over here as well. So this pattern is getting pretty damn close. It's getting very, very close. But I think it's got like one more is, is kind of what I'm saying. Um, anyways, go check out uh, Mr. Ripples over here. Mr. Ripples uh, looking a little bit weaker than the rest. Um, <clears throat> yeah, potentially breaking this horizontal right here at about 33 and a quarter cent. Uh, in fact, I mean, th this was the more important one right here. I don't know why I had the line there. Uh, this is, this is the more important area, 34 and a half cents. As long as you're below 34 and a half cents, I play this to the downside, looking for actually down around here, around low 28 cent. Um, but same thing over here, you know, three day dollar death cross, still getting rejected by the 21 exponential and using that as resistance. Um, I'm going to be bearish as long as that, as long as that's going down. Uh, if 28 cents breaks, which I'm not saying that it's going to, but if it were to break, then the next big air support is quite further down at around the high, the mid to high teens. So be aware of that. Uh, not looking too, not looking too hot. Uh, Stellar over here, same, same, same shit. I don't know why everyone's so bullish on Stellar. I don't get it. Maybe they're not looking at the U.S. dollar chart. But this was a, com this, this over here was a complete break of formation. In fact, this was your signal over here. This bull trap, wherever you, whenever you spit up above a resistance and technically do a breakout. But again, no volume, no volume telling you. So it's like, come on, guys fucking pay attention um and then comes back in well that's that that's that's your bull trap right over there you could have just i mean that's that's the area to get short on uh and then then they give you another chance right over here and it's still just getting rejected by this area and it is about one tick away from getting the three-day dollar death cross again this is one of the better charts of, of them all for like not dumping not pumping and dumping all the way back down to where you started from but it's still this is not a bullish chart by any means uh very very likely to come back down to six and a half cents down around here uh maybe even lower at at around four, you know, four, uh, upper four cents area. Um, 
but uh what are you doing right now i mean you're basically i mean you i mean did you already just put it in this formation right here basically a like some sort of a triangle some sort of a consolidation triangle and perhaps we are getting ready to play that out uh let's see where would that come down towards don't really have anything else in this range so it doesn't well actually no this would be exactly where this wick is right over here hey not bad not bad sometimes technical analysis shows you shows you the way uh whoops let's scroll back on uh, on out over there where is it a uh, little bit a little bit above eight cents um I don't know how much weight I put on that, but but overall, I would be bearish on this regardless. Uh, as, as long as you're below 12 and a half cents, no reason to be bullish on this. As long as you're below this area right here, 14 cents, like extremely no reason to be bullish on this. Um, and as, and if you're gonna, if you're about to get three day dildo death crossed, might even go short <laughs> again. I, I don't know. I, I don't trade alts like this. I don't trade any alts really. There's just not enough liquidity, but yeah, um, could, uh, could have, you know, might, might have a nice trade there. Uh, anyways, go back on to Bitcoin over here. I'm going to wrap this bitch up and uh, send you off on your merry way. Or actually, you know what? You want to look at Litecoin. Everyone wants to look at Litecoin. Understand Litecoin is not going to be doing anything different than Bitcoin or, or Mr. Buterall. He's just a follower. That's all. Um, and over here, broke this formation to the downside. Uh, this one actually a little bit more of a bearish formation, putting in a rising channel over here. Uh, sorry, not a rising channel, a rising wedge. Again, not my favorite, not my favorite patterns to play. I don't really like wedges. I, I like triangles and channels. Those those typically play out. Wedges and and and, and various assortments of other patterns do not, because they're just too easy to play out. And too many people know them. Um, as long as you're below 33 bucks, not good. Uh, next support right around here at around 31. If you break that area, going uh, don't see much holding up from about high 28 dollars. So be aware of that. Um, if, if, if you can get back above $33 and then maybe $35 would be the next stop, probably a nice trade in there. But, uh, overall, you know, looking at Bitcoin and, and looking at Mr. Butyrol, they are looking a little bit more sick than, than that. Uh, in fact, just looking at the 12 hour right here, you have a very nasty exponential movement average cross, which is, which is quite, which, which is quite, which is quite, quite, quite fresh. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry guys. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but right over here and let's see where the 10 simple is. Cause if the 10 simple gives us, uh, is anywhere around price action, that's probably gonna be a sell to me. Um, nope. It's actually way far away. Funnily enough. So, you know, you put in a, you put in a do a massive, uh, long, like a doji dildo right here, getting that cross and confluence with that likely to have a follow through on that. Um, a lot of the times you do want to see the cross pulled into the price action. Uh, but on a higher time frame like this, it can be a little bit further away and still work out. Um, it'll just, you know, just imply like a less, a less powerful move, uh, which would kind of make sense to me. Again, everyone's going to get so bearish if Bitcoin comes back down to 3,300 saying, oh my God, 2,900, it's going back to 2,600. It's like, no, wait until it actually breaks. So again, I can't stress that enough. Everyone's going to be on the wrong side of the, uh, the wrong side of the trade at the wrong time. I mean, you have tone, I mean, you have tone base buying every $100 down right over here, right over here, right over here, right over here. That's why I never shows the trade and unless you have Stani and fucking chart guys and insert random crypto Twitter, per, uh, or sorry, random crypto YouTube person here. Um, Whereas I, I'm happy to show you mine. This is my streamer account. I built it up. You guys have seen this fully uh, as transparent as possible uh, as I can do, like within reason, you know, like not showing like my fucking passwords and shit. Um, but ever since like uh, middle of April, um, and and by the way, sorry, I I don't know if I mentioned before, but I closed I closed the uh, the twenty Bitcoin short right over here. I was short eight um, eighty thousand uh, dollars or eighty thousand contracts of Bitcoin. I think that's like that's like twenty thousand or sorry, that's twenty Bitcoins. I closed all of that um, around like the low thirty six hundred level. So just ended up being a scalp because I don't I don't want to hold position like directional trades during the weekend because it's just less likely to actually play out um, or do anything crazy. Although this this actually kind of does look like it wants to move down. Um, anyways, you know, yeah, looking at this area right over here, uh, it, yeah, it does kind of look weak, but I, again, got away for confirmation. Um, so yeah, you know, it, and just like everyone gets bullish, you know, every like little bounce up that, that you get over here, everyone gets super bullish over here, you know, the inverted head and shoulders, baby, it's going up. Uh, they're going to get super bearish down around here as well. Uh, I mean, yes, maybe it does blast through on the second pass. I'd say, I'd say it's still as a trader, I'd want to be more conservative than not. Again, it's not about being right. It's about making money. And that's, you know, that's the way that you can make this sustainable is to not fucking blow yourself up by guessing, which is what many people do. And then having no sense of risk 
management. I mean, if, if you don't, if you don't have risk management, the market will take your money over time and it'll take every last penny that you're cool with. Cause quite literally that's what risk management is. How much are you cool with, 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 with losing in order to find out that you're wrong? So let that be, you know, let that be a statement and, and, and listen, I, I, you can't go professional. You can't do this as a living until you actually get that down. It's the most important part because people, people just think about like what they can make. I mean, and then, and then you evolve to the thinking of, okay, well, what can I make in order, in essence, and what do I have to give up in order to know if what I want to, what I think I can make is going to be right. That's where it becomes a little bit, a little bit even more, more better. But if you can figure out risk management, you can probably, you, you can do this as a living. Um, it's just, just over time, statistical setups. Anyways, uh, so yeah, again, nothing's really changed in the last, uh, uh, since we spoke last. I'll be, I'll be on Discord today. Um, so I look forward to seeing to 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 chatting with you guys there. But to just wrap up the lower time frames. Uh, I'd be I'd really be using this support down around here. Yes, I do know that we have a bear flag right around here. Yes, I do know that basically every time frame is death crossed. Everything is pretty much pointing down as far as time higher time frames go. Daily, two day, and um, I think almost three day stokes are pointing downwards. Um, and you know hidden bearish divergence on the on the two day, and and some bigger sell signals as well. So. I would still be careful though, uh, until this area right here breaks on at least an hourly or two hour at 3569. Um, I wouldn't be looking for the big down trade. Uh, if, if things do pop back up, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be looking for a long trade. I, I'm not, I mean, I'm not looking for a long trade in general, but if things did pack, pop back up and test this support, this resistance, I'd probably be a seller. If things get above this resistance, I take the loss and then reposition probably around 3750. And then if that area fails, then yes, I'd try 3850, uh, uh, right around here, this blue box territory, which remember that would be the 3A2 fib um, on this guy. But uh, but overall, just kind of sitting back and going to try to enjoy the weekend as much as I can. Um, so, yeah, hope everyone's doing well. Hope everyone's having a beautiful uh, Saturday. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I'll be back on um, tomorrow, maybe late. If there is some serious price action, I will be on later, but I'm going to guess that's uh, probably going to be more of the same. So, hey, uh, if you want to chat, hit me up on uh, Discord. Happy to always chat. And uh, take care and see you guys soon.